procedural animation. <laughs> I've been looking to learn to do that in Good Engine for a while because I don't like pixel art. I rather use flat design art and especially vector art. And Grot has some pretty cool features about that. So I love to make procedural art in Grot Engine in the sense that I don't draw most of my stuff. They are basically just some basic graphics stacked on Grot Engine using the built-in draw functions or the built-in uh, 2D nodes as well. And I just learned how we can make uh, inverse kinematics in 2D in Godot Engine. Let me show you how I did that. So this is a tentacle of an enemy in my game. My game is based on <laughs> some Lovecraft entities. And I think that tentacles is what characterizes um, the Lovecraft monsters the most. And I had to implement that. So in this specific case, you know that tentacles they have those movements very wavy very smooth and is it would be very hard to do that if i decided to do this frame by frame or if i had to code or well we could use like scene and sign and consign functions but i don't like to work with math the the whole goal of this approach is that i am dumb i don't know how to work with math i i skipped some math classes on my high school and most of the implementations that i saw previously especially like mrs Zizis and some other creators are handcrafted implementations to implement IQ uh physics or IQ animations so inverse kinematics animations and with this approach uh well we have now we have inverse kinematics for 2d in Godot engine and i discovered how we can do that uh very easily is is very very intuitive in Grunt Engine and with that I managed to make this tentacle to move like that. Well you can see that it's not as smooth as it could be uh, but this is mo more because of the way that I'm drawing this line because this is a line 2D so it's this node right here which is a line 2D that draws a path 2D which is this one here and, but but the, the whole inverse kinematic thing is working as it should. So this is not going to be a tutorial video because I don't want to get into all the details of this uh, specific feature. This is going to be more of a feature showcase or a tip. Underst take this video as a tip instead of a tutorial, okay? So we have this, uh, we have this node called Skeleton 2D which allows us to, well, create a relationship, a hierarchical relationship between some bones. And these bones are going to be uh, what we are going to actually animate so, because we can link these bones to uh, some graphic elements. Uh, in my case, I'm linking them to my path here and drawing this path with this line 2D. So the way, uh, let me show you uh, how this happens. So, I take all the bones in the skeleton and I map each of these bones to a point in my um, path to the curve. So you can see the curve right here, set point to the index of the, the skeleton. And this is how I draw this line because on this line here, it takes all the points of a given path that I can pass in this um, variable here in this property. And it will basically just map all the points in the path. Well, at least the, the baked points, right? So the baked points, because the baked points are the actual resolution of the path. Uh, if I only take take the points, it would draw only this, uh, these eight points here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points. And well, I want more resolution than that. And we can define the resolution of a given path using this bake interval property here, but I digress. After we establish this relationship, this means that the all of these bones are interconnected and changing the rotation, the scale, or the position of the, the root node here, the root bone, will change all the other ones. So uh, the way that we can achieve, uh, let me show you how this specific uh, skeleton looks like. This is so I can achieve a smoother movement for the tentacle, but uh, you probably won't use this many 
um, skeleton bones in your specific approach. Unless you also want to make a tentacle as well. But the, the magic happens when you add this skeleton modifier here. So skeleton modification stack 2D. This is the resource that we use to add effects to the skeleton. And especially when we add this skeleton modification to the fabric so fabric stands for forward and backward reverse inverse kinematic or something like that because it's going to look forward to look for the target node and backwards to map all the the bones so they rotate toward looking towards this target node and you can set the target node using this property here so target node path which in my case is this node right here so if i move it it's going to try to uh, rotate all the bones so they will properly handle the inverse kinematics following this node so this is what gives this fluid movement right here let me toggle off this and that so we only have this yeah so uh the next thing uh that w b the magic actually let, let me show my face because guys this was really amazing let me show you something that uh, i'm going to explain in a moment if i come back here i'm not going to show you this just yet i'm just going to play this animation okay so you can see that it is automatically animating in a eight sign so making like an infinite sign just so i have this idle animation showing this curvy or tentacle um, movement here and this is one of the major principles of animations the movement should be in arcs instead of being straightforward right so instead of being in a line and to do that <laughs> to do this kind of arc movement is very annoying if you want to go by hand but as you can see i'm going to show you the animation here the other thing uh, everything that i had to do was to animate a path follow to the progress ratio property so that it is following this path to the here so the idle path to the using that i can map i can use a remote transform to the to uh, transform this uh, target I key, so the inverse kinematic target node position, right? And this allows me to make all the arc movements that I want. And especially if I want to create another animation, so let's create another one here, uh, test. And let's make it, yeah, I think that one second is good enough. So I, I will save this curve here, create. I will create another one, uh, make it unique, create a new key, and I'm going to change it to something like, let me move this like this. So it will try to make this movement. Let's try to make something like this. Instead, it is going to do that. And uh, let's also save the path follow progress radio so that it does kind of like a slap <laughs> on the player so we can do some damage to the player as well so something like this it's going to be real quick actually like this and let's do this real 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 quick like this well something that we also need to be aware of yeah okay and this is going to be an is out animation like this. Blew, blew. It's, it's not a slap, it's kind of like a cut, right? So, but well, it, it does the trick. So I can change this curve. And if I want to make this object, this tentacle, come back to the um, idle animation, to the idle, uh, this, wavy, this wavy animation that we have previously, I just can I can basically just save this path right here, so this curve at the beginning of the animation, and I can toggle between this, so when it's idle, and when it's cutting the play, like deal, dealing some damage, two, 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 slapping the player, and the, all of this is possible using these tools that Guru offers building for us. I I don't know about um, advanced animation softwares especially especially these ones 
for uh, 2D ones. I know that we can do that with 3D uh, Blender, for instance, but Grot Engine is the only one that I know of that we can do that using the built-in tools. So having a path that we can map an object to follow it and use um, inverse kinematics to do these kinds of animations. So it's an amazing approach to do procedural animations in Godot Engine. And I say procedural because even though I'm using a path 2D here that's uh, uh, animating it with a predefined animation, if I want to, actually I'm, I am doing that because when players get inside the side area of this tentacle, uh, I only animate this object here so it will look like it's grabbing the player towards its center. So let me show you that. Let me showcase my game now. So I'm going to undo everything here. Okay, so this is the site area that I just talked about. Uh, I'm going to add one of those in the actual game. So I already have one of them right here. And let's try this out so you can see what happens. So there you have it, the, the, the tentacle. And if I get close, it's going to snap to the player and drag it to the center of the tentacle. And players can't move outside of that. But we, oh, okay. <laughs> but that's it. So I uh, this is the kind of thing that we can do with procedural animations. I never had to animate a single keyframe in regards to position, rotation, or scale of this tentacle. It just magically not magically well we, we understand that it's procedural math and all of this uh annoying stuff but it's really easy to just achieve the behavior that i wanted by using this skeleton 2d and inverse kinematics i'm really happy about the result that i got i just have to fix this really annoying uh bumps on the, the actual drawing so let me hide all of these what is the next one? What's this? Okay, it's the site area here. So I really uh, want to fix this specific, well, these bumps. I want the this, this tentacle to be more smooth. I don't know if I would have to increase the amount of skeletons. If this is the case, I don't want to do that. But Anyway, uh, I think that I can achieve that by working with this path to the, especially smoothing out this, uh, this point. As you can see, it smooths out the curve, but I think that I will have to work with math to achieve that because it will increase this in and out points based on the distance from uh, to the next point. And I think that this will be a little bit annoying to implement by hand but well i will have to do it if i want to achieve the visuals that i want that i am for but that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed if you actually want a an actual in-depth tutorial about this kind of uh animation style please let me know in the comments i'll be happy to do that i'm just recording this video because uh i have some pretty good feedback on this um X post that I posted a while ago, so this week, and I said, well, if people want to know how this can be done, I will just showcase this feature, and if they want a tutorial, they can ask for it. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing, and until the next time, see you there.